Now, apparently, shopping at the airport is going to get cheaper. After one chain said it's going to give back some of the VAT it claims from customers, Ben is here to explain all. Morning. Yeah, it can all be those big Toblerones and all that stuff you buy at the airport. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, morning to you. Uh, yeah, you know when they ask for your boarding pass at the shop at the airport? It's because the firm can actually claim the, back the VAT from the taxman if you're travelling outside of the EU. Now, you might remember there was a big row about this when it was first revealed because many firms were hanging on to that cash rather than giving it back to us as customers. So let me run you through how it works because goods that are sold to people who are travelling outside the EU, they're exempt from paying VAT. It's about 20% or it is 20%. Uh, stores can claim back that VAT so they just use your boarding pass to actually work out where you're travelling to and whether the goods that you're buying are eligible. But many stores have failed to pass on that saving to customers. Now, by law, you don't actually need to present a boarding pass. You can actually refuse to do so. But if you're buying alcohol or tobacco, you will still have to show your boarding pass. Well, WH Smith has now changed its policy. It says you can claim back that VAT. Effectively, it works out about a discount of 20% in store. So why? Let's speak to Charlotte Turner, who's the managing editor of TR Business. It's a trade magazine for the airport retail sector. Charlotte, good morning. Good morning. Uh, just explain this for us, because there are a few caveats about what you've got to spend and how you get it back. Sure. So at WH Smith, you do get the VAT refund on products that are over £6 or eight dollars and you do have to go to um, a, a man till or we've now just discovered this morning that the self-checkout machines are actually working but you do need a member of staff nearby just to tap their authorization uh, on, on the scanner as well to get that refund and, and that's a big change of heart from wh smith and, and i suppose the question is whether other retailers will now follow suit because at the time there was a big row that many people didn't realize why they were even asking for your boarding pass many people thinking it was for security it was so they could claim this money and hang on to it sure at the moment we don't we haven't heard from the other retailers that they will follow suit however the uk travel retail forum have um, they're, they're negotiating uh, with the treasury and they're coming up with a code of conduct to ensure that the you know playing field will level across uk airports so at the moment we haven't heard from the other retailers if they'll do the same but in a few months who knows? Yeah, and that's the idea, isn't it? The Treasury trying to look at this and saying, look, of course, VAT is paid on goods normally, but if you're travelling outside the EU, you shouldn't have to pay it. And, and I suppose it's about hopefully coming up with a standard rule of practice that applies whichever shop you're in at the airport. Of course, a, a best practice kind of thing. Um, of course, each re retailer has a different uh, price structure and you know you have to go to each one to get their comments on, on how they work, obviously. And, and World Duty Free, again, a uh, different set of rules once again. Yeah, as we said, if you buy an alcohol or tobacco, you do have to still show your boarding pass. Actually, for every transaction, you must present your boarding pass because otherwise they won't know if you can also claim the VAT back at that point as well. So for perfumes and cosmetics, for instance, that will still be you'll still need to show your boarding pass as well. Now, if we spin back to when that row first emerged, that many people are unaware that that's what the retailers were doing, how did they respond? I mean, they've been doing this for years, I assume. They were doing it quite happily. They were managing to take a little bit extra, and that was helping boost their profits. But this is now a big uh, big reversal in how they can do that. Mm -hmm, of course. Um, I, I must say that at, at the time, um, they weren't doing anything illegal. Yep. Obviously, we, we must stress that point. Um, and, you know, a number of customers were obviously disgruntled. And, you know, we've had a comment from George Osborne in the past that said, you know, he, he was also um, upset about these practices. Um, but again, negotiations with the UK Power Retail Forum, you know, started, you know, immediately following this. And they've been negotiating with the Treasury uh, following that. So, yeah, every, everyone's doing, doing their part at the moment. Yeah, an interesting one. Charlotte, thanks for explaining all that. Charlotte Turner there from TR Business. Now, I was going to leave you with one thought that uh, Colin has sent in to us. He said, in the United States, you pay tax at the airport. Why should we get this money back? Actually, you're leaving the country. You should charge tax because we all need the money. So uh, I don't think, Colin, that's really the spirit of things. But nonetheless, uh, he thinks we should be paying tax. But there we go. You don't hear that very often, no, do you? No. A rare voice saying we should be paying tax at the airport. Hey, we like to cater for all the voices. We do. <laughs> ben, thanks very much.